Look what I said. Go back and read what I said. And tell me if you think I called anyone who voted on the side of the position taken by Bull Connor that they were Bull Connor. But not from this president. Is he really concerned that, that we may not have fair and free elections? The president has been consistent on this issue and the issue at hand, the issue of their last... السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. What's going on, the BBs? I'm Siraj Hashmi. I'm Jack Kobe. We're the BB Bros. Welcome to a premium episode of the BB Power Out with a very special guest tonight. We're going to get right into it. Sarah Higdon. Assalamu alaikum, Sarah. Welcome, Welcome to the show. Thank you. Sarah Higdon, for those of you who don't know, is a content creator and host of Transformation, or is it Transform to Freedom? Did I get yeah, it right? Yeah, trans- it's Transform to Freedom. It's Transform a play on words, too. If you see it, it says trans uh, form uh, to freedom. Man. <laughs> uh, do you think that you are free, Sarah? Yes. 100%. Essentially. Essentially. Oh, he always got to drink. Man, she already knows the rules. What are we drinking tonight, Sarah? So I actually have something right here. This, um, a friend of mine owns, or their family owns um, Tarpon, St- Tarpon Spring Distillery. So this is some of their uh, top-notch award-winning moonshine. So that's what I'm drinking. Wow. wow. So <laughs> Going off really getting hard stuff. Yeah, we're really getting <laughs> lit tonight. What about you, Jay? I am drinking uh, water. I got a little fucked up last night. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jay, when did you turn on. when did you turn into me? I, I'm turning into you because this is what I'm getting into. Do it, baby. Do little it. Angels gonna, envy. Little angels envy. Because I gotta work out later on tonight, too. Oh, Jay, you little bitch. Well, Sarah, we're so glad to get you on the show finally. Um yeah, I had the pleasure of joining you on your on your podcast in December. And uh it was yep. a good time, but it wasn't it, 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 like I'm not used to being a guest. I'm always used to being <laughs> the host so it, yeah it's always like I, i'm never uncomfortable as a guest i'm always fine but i always feel like i could get to know somebody better when i have them on my show so this exactly is, this is, i mean i did leave uh, you speechless though what there was what, one i'm trying point. to remember what did i do what did i what, what did no, i not it, we, say we we were talking about um vaccines and why these companies are pushing the way that they are and then i used the bo burnham joke that's right, and I still haven't <laughs> watched that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, actually, I'm really glad that we were able to do a show today because the there's a lot more spin happening from the White House. And starts off this morning with Vice President Kamala Harris going on the Today Show. And essentially... 100%. Oh, Jay, stop drinking, you piece of shit. He's going to get me really <laughs> fucked up now. Oh, yes. Just, I mean, yeah. how the turntables have turned. Yeah. Well, apparently so, the rumor is Jay's pregnant. Is this true? It, it is. <laughs> and it's just got Alba's baby. And the funny funny thing is, she got me pregnant from eating her ass. Ooh. That's how I got that's, pregnant. That's impressive. That's impressive. It, it really is. I don't know how it happened. It might be her husband's now that I think about it. <laughs> but life uh, life finds a way. It it does. No, life I was supposed to I was, I was gonna be a little late. But luckily because I you're getting your ass eaten. No. It was a play on, you know, when, when a woman says I'm gonna I'm I think I'm late. Oh uh, oh you're like oh oh <laughs> wow, that really took me a long time to get. I just got it. Well, when you don't have sex like you don't, I mean, those type of references <laughs> are hard to come by. They are hard to come by. <laughs> come. come. Uh, so Kamala Harris went on the Today Show and tried to clean up after President Biden's uh, marathon press conference 
in which he casts doubt on the legitimacy of the next elections or any election, really, if his voting, his John Lewis Voting Rights Act doesn't get passed. Hit it, Spencer. Another comment the president made, he openly cast doubt on whether the 2022 midterm elections would be legitimate. He said it all depends, um, which is astonishing to hear a president question whether our elections will be legitimate. We've heard it before, but not from this president. Is he really concerned that, that we may not have fair and free elections? Look at that smug the fucking president look. has been consistent <laughs> on this issue and the issue at hand, the issue I was there last night uh, in the chamber of the Senate. And the issue is that there are two bills, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the Freedom to Vote Act that have been the, the solution that has been offered to address the fact that around our country, states have put in place laws that are purposely making it more difficult for the American people to vote. Laws which will be felt by at least 55 million Americans, regardless of their party affiliation, their race, their gender, or their geographic location. Well, to the point, though, because so those we bills have been were clear, debated. And it's, but it's, yeah, the, the, the bills it's, were debated it's, it's, and they didn't may, pass. If so I may the, finish, the if, I may, if I may course, finish. But the specific question, if you don't mind, does he think, now that these bills have have been passed that the 22 midterms won't be legitimate or fair or free let's not conflate issues so what we are looking at <laughs> and, and the topic of so much debate last night was that we as america cannot afford to allow this blatant erosion of our democracy and in particular why did they think the right why did they think Americans that she was like charismatic vote, or to was able to, to the ballot unfettered to be that on tv like this to the push any type of and issue and let's not be distracted by the political gamesmanship when what is truly at stake are, are, are issues like whether Americans with disability have the opportunity to vote by mail, whether a single parent has the opportunity with three kids in the back seat to vote by dropping off their ballot in a drop box instead of having to stand in line with those three kids for hours. These are the issues that are at stake. And the president and laid a lot of significant and, and, yeah. and pivotal issues in terms of our democracy. Yeah. We had an extensive conversation about foreign policy, Savannah. Yeah. Well, I've met with I've met with prime ministers and presidents from around the globe, both partners and allies of ours. They are asking what is going on with voting rights in America because they look to us as a role model of what it means to be a democracy. And they are monitoring to wonder and question whether there is an erosion of our democracy and therefore an erosion of one of the best role models of what a democracy does and can do. I would love to see a list of those allies and partners that she's talking about. I bet the the leading one is like the fucking Taliban. <laughs> well, Canada too. Like, remember? Yeah, our Canada. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sarah, Canada, like, we have to do something to invade, right? Yeah, exactly. We, we do have to invade Canada, or just well, not can, entirely. Canada is threatened to invade us over like, over the. Election. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's so that's, <laughs> that's so why, cute. We got to preemptively <laughs> strike them out of the face of the earth. I mean, there's they all live in one little place anyways. Just strike there. Yeah. So, Sarah, when you hear that, when you hear this spin from Vice President Harris following President Biden's suggestion that if these two bills don't pass, which they didn't, they, they failed in the Senate because the Senate majority of 52 senators, that's 50 Republicans and two Democrats, voted against changing the filibuster rules from 60 to 50, a simple majority. But what the hell goes through your mind, especially everything that happened that we saw over the last year with the previous president, Donald Trump? Well, this isn't anything new. Um, I mean, it's pretty rich. I mean, this is, I mean, Trump wasn't the first person to question election results. I mean, I live in Georgia. Stacey Abrams was questioning our governor results two years prior and never gave it up, never conceded victory. Hillary Clinton never conceded victory. Um, and so it's just a political football that gets pushed back and forth. Um, and I, I honestly don't understand how you can say that you had the most voter turnout ever and then say that we're not going to be able to vote in the next election. 
<laughs> like in this in the state of Georgia, we didn't have drop boxes until last year. Right. And now there's or, or, still yeah, or the, one or the per year before, county. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, this is this is the first year that that was the first time that we ever had drop boxes. And now they're they're limiting drop boxes uh to one per county, but still you can still vote via Dropbox. It's not going to change anything in that regard. Um, and I also, yeah. I mean, I, I just saw everything that happened last year. It was it was pretty crazy, like in November when they were talking about like voter lines and stuff like that. And you see, like I drove past all these voter, voter polling places. Like we have three weeks to vote. I mean, it's yeah. not like it's just one day to vote. Anybody right. can get out there and vote. Yeah, yeah it's, it's almost great. like they want to make that, uh, you know how there was the the, push some time ago jay where they wanted to change uh vote election day to a national holiday that's completely gone out the window right i mean that that would help that would help right right then and there for voting rights i mean make it a three-day national national holiday where everything gets gets closed and you, you're allowed to leave early from work or whatever and go and vote uh that would help a lot more than you know different places where they can harvest votes or drop boxes or any of these other measures that they pretend are what is necessary in order for people to vote. My favorite thing that happened the last time was when they wanted to put laws in place where uh, moderators couldn't hand out water or any right. of that kind of stuff. And they're like, oh my God, they want black women to die in lines <laughs> and not be able to vote. And you can't vote because you're going to die of dehydration instead it's yeah it's it's fucking november <laughs> it's november <laughs> it's these people don't understand the law now there's plenty that's wrong with this new georgia law because that's basically what they're doing this all for is because this new law passed in georgia and other states are kind of following suit there's a plenty wrong with that i mean the libertarian party is trying to challenge different provisions of the law but they're um most of it's not that bad like the whole water thing it makes sense yeah. when you actually read the law, but most people are not informed. They do just listen to talking points. It's like, I mean, we see it all the time, even on Twitter. Like you have people that post a article and people only read the headlines because right. the whole argument was debunked in the whole article, you know? So like what that, the, the perception that that headline creates is completely false and they, Technically, they're not false in the headline, but they create a different perception what people are actually reading into the article. Yeah. yeah, and look at this bit of misinformation, or maybe I guess we could call it disinformation from Hillary Clinton tweeting out and then deleting. The U.S. Senate is now on the record. 48 Republicans and two Democrats are in the history books for using the filibuster to do what the filibuster does best. Block the right of Americans, particularly Black Americans, to vote. For once, she's wrong on the math, which is hilarious because, you know, this is someone who's I don't even know if she wrote the tweet, but we're just going to assume that she did. <laughs> and on top of that, you look at that last line, block the right, uh, block the right of Americans, particularly black Americans to vote who in like there has never been an example cited of anybody not being allowed the right to vote. Well, I, like I, Sarah, I, when, every we, single we, time well, this happens, it's always like, oh, black people disenfranchised black people. You can't give uh, asking for ID to vote. Black people can't get IDs. They can't go to the DMV. They can't get, uh, you know, government issued driver's licenses or, you know, any uh, photo ID to show the person that they, who they are. And then on the same in the same fucking breath, like within the same sentence, they're being like, oh, where's your vaccine card? Exactly. Exactly. Like anybody, it, this is, and, and people have started to really realize that there is racist, racism of low expectations. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to black people and minorities, um, there is a lower expectation that they should be able to do stuff. And, and when you really start to understand it in that sense, it's like this, like you are the racist. And I mean, Hillary Clinton, her husband signed the 94 crime bill. I, right. <laughs> which was designed to put more minorities in prison. Yeah. And which probably both, well, and also people forget <laughs> Joe Biden was a co-sponsor. He was a co-sponsor of that 94 crime bill. Everyone forgets that. Yeah. Everyone remembers yeah. about Hillary. <laughs> they all forget about Joe. And then of course, Kamala Harris, when she was the district attorney of San Francisco and then the attorney general 
of California. She obviously used those laws to lock up uh, the the on parents of truant school. children. I, I saw a Jay, meme the other day that said on Martin Luther King Day, it said Kamala Harris would lock Martin Luther King up. And that was perfect. <laughs> Jay, of course, is a racist after what we heard last night, right? Uh, I was gosh. I was actually going to mention this. I, I'm surprised we're even allowed to have this stream tonight because I thought you guys were going to get canceled. Oh, because think, of what, well, I, what I said. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally taken out of context. And everything that I said, I heard from my mother. Like verbatim <laughs> was said and taught to me by my mother. No, but it, it's hilarious because like you're saying, all of that that I was saying last night is an example of the bigotry of low expectations. It's like, for example, you can't put a Muslim cartoon up there because then somebody's going to blow shit up. So if you yeah. do that, yeah, you're the one being Islamophobic. And it's like, really? I don't. I don't think so. And it's the same thing and how they like to treat minorities here. They like to treat them as if they are second rate. Ma right. Meaning if you are saying that a black person can't do something a white person can do, you're saying you're saying he's a second class citizen. You're the ones doing that. Not not anyone else. Nobody's putting laws in place to, to do that when you go vote or putting IDs in place or anything like that. Everybody has to go get an ID. And most places like Georgia, we're saying that even if you walk up there without one, they'll issue issue one for free right then and there so you can mm -hmm. vote. So there's really no barriers to go and voting in, except for just getting to the line or getting to the, the voting booth or dropping off your, your ballot. These the, the reason why I don't like a lot of these like mail-in ballots or any of the stuff, especially like here in California, it depends on what you're registered as. And then it just – if you don't vote on it, they'll just – count it as what you what you're registered as but maybe you didn't want to vote that way maybe there was a there was a, an issue or a prompt or something like that that you want to vote against you can't and i think it's just most of that is just really stupid if you really care about it if you really care about voting if you really like you said you have three weeks go do it yeah i you know but i actually have a secret uh i i, I think loki i look jay loki i think you're a lib Low key, you think I'm a lib. Yeah, because you complain about California so much, and yet there's nothing actually preventing you from leaving. Well, there's a few things you and you know <laughs> there's a couple of things preventing me from leaving California. Like what are you talking about? I got I got I got a few couple That's what a lib would two, say. Five different type of things that are here. I mean, yes, California is is absolute garbage when it comes to everything about it. Uh, but number one, you can't beat the weather. Uh, yeah. Well, Mary California. also Mary Mary Lynette, uh, who is a devoted devoted Habibi and the mother of Jay, uh, says he never blames his immigrant father for anything. You guys, SMA. Oh, of course, <laughs> of course. The white woman throwing a brown man under the bus. <laughs> Look, and you and you're like, how did he learn all this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't he even put oh, it up there. She just did it breaks herself. My heart. <laughs> just breaks my heart, man. I'm with you. I'm with you, Mary. I'm a drag. I'm a drag his lib ass for you. Um, so Jen Yazaki, Jen Saki, uh, the White House oh, press secretary. Now, now I, I have to obviously know today is the one year anniversary of the Biden administration officially starting. Uh, with the inauguration of 2021. Um, and of course, Biden has terrible approval ratings. He's down to 33% as of this week. And Jen Psaki is uh, continuing to deal with the fallout over Biden giving Putin, essentially. 100%. The green light to uh, invade Ukraine, or what they call a minor incursion. Go ahead and play that clip. Other elections are going to be suspect? Well, I talked to the president about this last night uh, and this morning. Uh, he was not intending to cast doubt on the legitimacy of the 2020 election. He was actually attempting to make the opposite point, which is that in 2020, uh, despite COVID, 
despite many attempts to suppress the vote, a record number of voters, Democrats and Republicans, independents too, turned out in the face of a pandemic and election officials made sure they could vote and have those votes counted. He was also explaining that the results would be illegitimate if states do what the former president asked them to do in more than a half a dozen states in 2020, uh, after the 2020 uh, election, never, toss out ballots and overturn results after that? the fact. And his view is that what one of the most important roles we can play now is informing and educating the public Where? on what these laws are, on efforts to suppress their vote, uh, and even beyond the laws, uh, efforts in different states across the country to make it more difficult for them. Our elections are going to be suspect. Just well, brazenly lying like that is just amazing. It's on the same level as uh, as McAnus and uh, <laughs> uh, what's the other guy's name? The Sean Spicer. The, Sean, Sean Spicer. I swear to God, like just brazenly lie the way that the that they do is on the same level as those two. I don't see it any other way. I really don't. Real quick, real quick. Uh, that wasn't the clip I was looking for. So Spencer, I know it was fired. Uh, but it's okay. You know, we need to play that clip anyway, Sarah, um, let me at least, is this, is this the clip Spencer? I swear to God, if it's not the clip, I'm going to shoot you. It is the clip. All right. Play it. That that is, the, you have to be very eyes wide open about that and clear eyed that that is the intention or potentially of him and certainly of, of members of his party. The president is satisfied, even if because yesterday, obviously, voting rights hit a wall in Congress right now without, without the votes for the filibuster rules to be changed. And given the conversation just had about other avenues that could be taken, if there is if there are no changes in terms of voting rights legislation going forward, the president does still feel confident that the elections this fall will be legitimate. Yes, have to be very. That wasn't the fucking clip, Spencer. <laughs> what the fuck? It's the one about Russia. About you it's know, okay. I don't think there's actually you know. I, it's about it's just a tip. I don't think there's. I don't. I don't think there's a, actually a clip. But there's oh, okay. A so that, he's not. He's, he's not. So, so I'm just not, really giving. I'm just giving. There. Yeah, he might not be the boomer there. I might just be you know busting his chops. Um, but Saki issued a statement after the press conference that President mm -hmm. Biden held, stating, "President Biden has been clear with the Russian president." If any Russian military forces move across the Ukrainian border, that's a renewed invasion, and it will be met with a swift, severe, and united response from the United States and our allies. President Biden also knows from long experience that the Russians have an extensive playbook of aggression, short of military action, including cyber attacks and paramilitary tactics. And he affirmed today that those acts of Russian aggression will be met with decisive, reciprocal, and united response. Sarah, you served in the military for over seven years, and you served yeah. in Afghanistan. Did you also serve in Iraq? No, just Afghanistan. Just Afghanistan. All right, so you know you, yeah. you've, you've been up close to the Russians uh, laying Afghanistan into basically a, a, a wasteland after they invaded in the 1980s. And of course, yep. our uncle, so our uncle Osama pushed them out. When you, well, I'm not when that you old. Think, I don't know how old you think I am, but I was right. <laughs> no, no, you were, you were a part of that, but like you were there in Afghanistan <laughs> within the last decade. So like, it yeah, wasn't that far removed. That's yeah, 2013. 2013. Okay. <laughs> so again, I'm a boomer, but uh, of course, that's you know, that's that's a. A consistent thing when you hear president biden sort of it, whether it's a gaffe or whether he actually meant it what goes through your mind when you hear the president go through this this period because it's it's just it, like it does it doesn't look good if you are trying to establish some sort of dominance as a country on the global stage no um in reality, we need, I mean, it, it's hard to say what we should do in, in that instance, but when you start speaking like that, you have to be willing to answer it, like with words, you, you start speaking those words, and you have to be able to answer it with force, and anytime that a Democrat has ever been in office and they draw red lines, it almost causes the people to cross those red lines and then we don't do anything. So it actually weakens us as a power to not like, we're not actually going to do anything. 
we wouldn't do anything to Russia. They're too important a uh, global ally to us to, in order, you know, so that we wouldn't do anything to them. And so are they and really they an that. ally though, Sarah? Or do you actually think that that Russia is an ally to the United States? Um, I don't know if they would actually be an ally. Uh, they're not. It, it's kind of like not really. Uh, I mean, they're not. Like I look ally, at them as ally, a. I, I look at them as a frenemy, if anything. It's it's they're an acquaintance. Like okay. they're not our friend, but they're not our foe. Like and and they're a power that we don't we, we wouldn't want to go to war with because it would be, and I don't think the American public would have the wherewithal to actually stomach a war with Russia. Right. I don't so we just drop bombs on brown people. That's yeah, that's the best like way like to do jet. It. Right. <laughs> and shot exactly. Uh, no, the one thing I, I, um, I think like, uh, like Sarah was saying is when you're, when you state that there's a red line not to cross and you have allies there, you have to back that up. Yeah. Even if it's going to be on unpo unpopular and, and people are not going to like it or anything like that. You have NATO there. Ukraine is an ally. You're supposed to protect them, give them, um, uh, defense mechanisms, all that kind of stuff. And you put a red line in, in place and then, yep. you know, Biden's going to, I mean, Putin will just step all over it. And it just, it makes no sense for him to even give a shit about the red line because um, what happened in Afghanistan to our well, allies, what the promises we made to, yeah. to our allies there and all of that kind of stuff. And, and uh, even after all of that damage, and failure of a withdrawal that was the uh, Afghan withdrawal. Biden still came up and said that he holds no responsibility or blame or anything of, of yeah. that happened there. So yeah, that was disgusting. They just don't care. See, and, and I think that's one of the things that uh, people don't understand is I think we've known probably for about the last 11 years that the Taliban was always going to take back over. Right. Um, but you think so? You really you, like in your heart of hearts? That's what you really think? I, I think we knew. I, I think we always knew. Um, just if we knowing, left completely, yeah, they would take over. That, and, and that's why we had we've haven't left for the last twenty years is because we knew that they would take over. Um, it was just what what president was going to be the unpopular one and do it. Now, with that said, I still think that um, it just didn't make sense. It our withdrawal from Afghanistan didn't make sense at all. I mean, you guys know that know the area. Um, right. Whoa! What a minute! What do you mean by that? <laughs> we know the area. Siraj, what do you mean we know the area? From? Maybe, Holy maybe shit. Siraj. I mean, from being from Pakistan and stuff. <laughs> but holy shit! That's, I mean, come on. That's what I, I lived, meant. I lived in Dubai. All right, like I lived in glamour. I lived in in high rise buildings. You know, Gucci, fucking Ferraris. And then I lived in Lebanon yeah. with you know Hezbollah and yeah, you know, learning how to throw Osama throw bin Laden yeah. in Abbottabad. Uh, yeah. Before I Wait. let you continue, Sarah, uh, okay. Faye Vivi <laughs> has a question saying, "Well, no, she doesn't have a question. She has a comment, not a question, of course, because Faye Vivi always has to get in those dunks." Sarah, Siraj is one of the rare Pakistanis bad at math. Dates are hard for him, but I actually do have a question from Jane Beepti. She says, well, "Okay, what branch did you did Sarah serve in?" So I was a logistics officer in the army for seven years, seven and a half years. Yeah. So I was in the 101st in 2013. When we went to Afghanistan and then I served in the 82nd uh, for two years. Oh, logistics. So cool. You, so you, you like planned parties and shit? Yeah. I mean, pretty much. <laughs> Parties on how actually we closed three fobs when we were in Afghanistan. So that was our wow. responsibility. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, wild. yeah. We were withdrawing down. We were withdrawing back in 2013, which is why this whole thing seems so ru being rushed and everything like that doesn't seem any make any sense. And we closed so, one of the we lo we closed the largest fob in the Paktia province within two months, and we were like the test subject shit. to do that. Yeah. So when you think when you hear this, uh, when when. Donald Trump was running for president in 2016. Not one of, it wasn't one of his main policy platforms, but it was specifically part of his America first agenda. And that mm -hmm. is specifically getting the U.S. out of foreign wars. Yep. By the time his presidency ended, 
a year ago today, the United States was still in Afghanistan and Joe Biden basically became tasked with withdrawing the United States entirely out of Afghanistan. Yeah. Why do you think Donald Trump didn't go through with getting the U.S. out of Afghanistan? Um, I think if he had gotten his second term, he still would have. Uh, his plan was to get out by May of the sh- of last year. So um, and that was kind of what I was going into before. But um, I think that any president, um, it's all about their legacy. And mm-hmm. they didn't want, again, I, I, I think the reason why he didn't do it early on in his presidency and he did it after his second term would have started is because he knew that we always knew that the Taliban was going to take back over and it would have been a stain on that. And he wouldn't have been able to get reelected uh, with the liberals pushing against that, you know, of seeing how, what happened. But the thing is, is he understood military strategy enough to know that we had to, he, his plan was to withdraw, withdraw during the winter time, mm-hmm. which is a huge difference. I mean, there's no fighting going on in the winter time. It's a huge difference. And then Ramadan fell during May last year as well. So those are two key things that people need. The people that when Biden pushed it back, he, he withdrew right at the end of the fighting season. And like mm-hmm. no key holidays or anything like that that would have prevented what happened. And then I I did a whole video on why General Milley should be fired and my whole reaction to that withdrawal. Okay, so so, so let's get a synopsis of this. Well, obviously, we all know why. And we all yeah. know that General Milley needs to be fired. But give us like a quick rundown of why Milley needs to be fired. And, what, and, and also tell us why do you think he's still on? Um, well, first off, it's his, it's his responsibility to advise the president. Um, if he told the president to go later, which we won't know until he writes a book, um, which will inevitably happen. Right. Exactly. Um, it's his job to advise the president of these key events and like why we should do it a certain way and why we should push back this withdrawal that why we should do it this way. Um, it should have been his responsibility to know. Um, the closing of Bagram Air Force Base. Mm-hmm. Um, so we closed Bagram Air Force Base, which had two runways to be able to withdraw people. It went down to just Kabul Air- Airport, where it only had one. Um, Kabul only had one runway. So when you look at it, and his excuse in the press conference after this all happened was that it would have taken more manpower to run both sites. But if that's your concern, instead of getting everybody out safely, it doesn't matter because you can simultaneously withdraw from both sites and be out at the exact same time. That's Mm -hmm. military does that best. And then they sent the 82nd airborne division and called up the GRF, which is basically their, it's called the global response force that they can respond to anywhere in the world within a 48 hour notice, Um, which Mm -hmm. is like the last year that I served in, we were the global response force by last year. And, last year that we were in so we could have deployed anywhere they ended up calling them in to secure and and to help with those withdrawals from kabul whereas the 82nd trains every single day on airfield seizures and securing an airfield um at the initial you know at the initial instance of a invasion so all you have to do is take those people and put them at at the uh bagram air force base to secure those airfields collapse the perimeter and then simultaneous with simultaneously withdraw from both places instead of just one. It, it, it really was, didn't seem to be that well thought out of a plan. And that's not something that's at the president's level. He just is giving, we need to be out by this date. You mm-hmm. figure out how to execute. That's how the military works. I give right. you an end state, you execute. And so, so that's what, that, that's the short of it. And then general Milley, his woke comments were the first thing that, like the oh, right. white rage comments. Absolutely <laughs> fucking insane. Like that's the most so, important thing in the military. My my, so my thing is, is yeah. like, it, it's like they want it to be more diverse to look like, you know, society. And that's not what the military is for. The military no. is not to have, you know, it's not to have people there just to, to fill a quota so they can fill exactly. a quota. It's supposed to have the best of the best. If a woman can't compete with a man and it's, there's one job, 
then it has to go to the man if he's better at it than than she is not has oh, yeah. to go to the woman to fill fill a quota it doesn't it's not supposed to work that way whatsoever so those no. comments they just sound so weak to come from like a military or a military person uh and i think they sound weak and to other other people like there was a there was a uh side by side I, I don't know if spencer can find it but there's a side by side on a uh, like a cartoonish type army ad for the united states and then there was one for russia that was just like a complete fucking <laughs> like a, a rambo style fucking thing you know what i mean like to show the differences yeah, that's that's really where the military's idea should be. Yeah, it, it is. Our, our like our ads to get people in have been be started to become woke and stuff like this. Now, one thing that I kind of get frustrated with is like they there's this week there was the dancing soldiers in the TikTok video. I don't know if you guys saw that video. Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> oh, we saw. It. <laughs> I didn't have as big of an issue with it as most people did. I'm like, have you ever met soldiers? That's what they do in their downtime. Like, that is right. what they do. They're kids. They're 19, 18, 19 years old. So I don't have that big of an issue with something like that. Um, but our advertisements being like, oh, my, I have two moms. Like, that's how, that's what the military is trying to bring in. Like, <laughs> like what does sexuality have to do with anything? Now, right. on the other comment, I actually... I, I, it wasn't that long ago when General Mattis was the Secretary of Defense and he told a group of soldiers to hold the line. We don't have the same issues as society has. I just need you to hold the line and maintain it because, and that's absolutely true because in the military, you don't care anybody's skin color, sexuality, you know, any of that stuff, as long as they can do their job. That's all right. that matters to anybody else. Mm -hmm. It's one of the least woke places in the world and everybody's cohesive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then obviously for the military, there is a common objective, a common goal, and that's to secure the interests of the United States and yep. obviously be the first line of defense against basically any threat. So this idea that we now have to be concerned about white rage or we have to be concerned about any of these you know culture war issues it's just so beneath the military that why you know it just makes anyone question why would they ever get involved why would he why would millie ever say something like a college professor because that's not his role that's not his lane no. it, just stick to your lane exactly exactly they can't. They can't. i'm still surprised there hasn't been one resignation over this honestly yeah. i thought yeah. like when you saw when you saw them fly um when you saw them fall off of the plane right then and there i was like somebody has to be losing their job over this somebody has to be losing their job over this and the fact that we're yeah. not playing this over and over again <laughs> to just shove it in their faces is insane to me this is a huge backlash i mean we had we had a story of a meeting in trump tower replay for months on end for a whole year for a whole four years they played that shit but something like this dies down in the first two months if even that well that's yeah. the way that's the media narrative and that's how that they don't they didn't like trump so obviously they're not they're they're gonna promote stuff it's the same thing with anything look at the 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 like what happens anytime a minority of any sort commits the, one of these mass crimes it's gone within a week you know, yeah. like it's, it's yeah, gone. We're not even and, talking about the uh, Colleyville hostage taking anymore. Yeah. Because the, per, the, the perpetrator is my Muslim. cousin and mine too. That's how Jay and I were actually related. I thought you guys just, I mean, we do that too. Yes. I mean, course. they, they, they okay. encourage, you know, <laughs> it happens. It happens. So, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, as you were saying, Sarah, to cut, I didn't mean to cut you off, but basically no, you're saying ahead. that anytime a person of color commits a heinous act, the story goes away almost immediately because uh, there's a narrative to be that, that yeah. needs to be upheld. 100%. Yeah. Um... God damn it. <laughs> Continue. <laughs>
no, what's what's next? Um, I think I, I said what I was gonna say. It was perfect timing. <laughs> uh, um, what the hell are you showing me, Spencer? So, zoom in. Is this a, is this a meth Sandel tweet? It looks like a meth Sandel tweet. Yes, it is. Max Abrams tweets out the Texas synagogue terrorist attack was a 24 hour news story. And then Meth Sandel tweets out the amount and type of coverage anti Semitism receives in much of the US media depends entirely on the perpetrator and not the victims. Even in our own story, we are relegated to pawns in the political narrative. Complete afterthoughts couldn't say it any better than that. Well, and going to the mili any military story that's out there too, I mean, we had 13 soldiers killed, and how long did that play? Um, I think the American public in a lot of ways got desensitized. And now during the Bush administration, any military death would have been news. Like there was the COVID, you know, how COVID they had the count on, on there. Yeah. Yeah. They had like the military death count on, on there at that time to play off emotion. Of as soon as Biden got elected, or as soon as Obama got elected, that went away. Yep. It did. I mean, and it, there's nothing, nothing there. The story about how a lot of these people were not vetted properly was a day story. That was it. There we have like 60,000 people that are not vetted properly when they were trying to say that this was all vetted 100% great, all of this type oh, of God bullshit. And nobody funny. went off, nobody went off and, and asked Jen Zaki again if they stand by those claims when we know for a fact that's all false. It's... Yeah. Well, how did they? I mean that that whole story too. The uh, that synagogue uh, hostage situation. The the thing is, is they messed up. Like our, like our people messed up. Like the ABC people messed up because that person had a uh, criminal record in England or he was on a terror watch list in England. And then he was still allowed to come to the United States. Like I thought we were supposed to have stuff in place so that that didn't happen. His name was Muhammad. They have to let him through. <laughs> <laughs> it has, it has you know, to I don't get scary. randomly. I don't get randomly selected anymore. I used to get randomly selected all the fucking time. Well, I was, I, that, that's I really interesting don't. because I, I, I thought that was something that we would have in common as being randomly selected every time we go through the airport. Right. And now it, it doesn't have, I'm like, what, but I, I wear my special underwear. You can <laughs> you know, take a peek <laughs> as long as you use the gloves. I like, I'm fine, but it doesn't happen anymore. Well, see, so, it doesn't I, happen to me anymore, but for different reasons. <laughs> I look, when you said alphabet people, I initially thought. Is she saying LGBTQ? No, I was it? talking about. The, I was talking the FBI, but yes. Yeah, I, think, that, 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 I was like, oh, the F, the, the ABC <laughs> agencies. Yeah, I guess. Well, man, I kept I kept that on my um on my profile. Like, I I have a talent for getting randomly selected because I've had that since day one, and it helps people like find me and and see where I am. Yeah. Oh, Natural. yeah. Naturally, a hundred percent. Essentially, God damn it! Um, fuck you up, motherfucker. This every every day, every time we do these live and all that kind of stuff as well. I'm the only one drinking. The guy brings a beer and he's like, "Yeah, I'm oh, gonna be man. drinking." <laughs> Look yeah. at him; he's fucking, he's getting trashed. <laughs> I hate you so much. I hate you so much. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the, you know we got uh, maybe about. 17 18 minutes left on on the the public viewing of this we're gonna we're gonna do some stuff uh for the exclusive habibis on patreon um after we pass an hour but matt walsh went on dr phil matt walsh of the daily wire and he went up against two non-binary individuals and basic essentially 100 percent 100 percent Ask them to define what a woman is. Do you have that clip, Spencer? Do you have it on hand? If not, I can play it. We can play it right here. Do you have it? Got it. That's a question I would like to throw out to you know, other members of the panel, actually, because just like the four-year-old can't answer what is a girl, well, this is one of the problems with this left-wing gender ideology is that no one who espouses it can even tell you what these words mean. It's like, what is a woman? 
Well, Can you tell me what a woman is? No, I can't. Because but, it's not for me to say. I, womanhood looks different for everybody. What do, you, what do you define a woman as? An adult human female. And what does a female mean? Uh, what, well, that's how do, you, how do you define a someone with, with female reproductive organs. Okay. Someone who's, you know, here's the thing. When you're, when you're female, it goes right down to your bones, your DNA. So that's why if someone dies, okay. we could dig up their bones 100 years from now. We have no idea what they believed in their head, but we can tell what sex they were because it's, in, it's down in, it's, it's in, ingrained in every fiber of their being. Interesting. So I'm trying to understand. Your definition is that a woman is someone who is female, you said, right? Correct. Gotcha. Is okay. a biological female. So what happens if we have maybe someone who is female, identifies as a woman, right? You know, cisgender woman, right? As you explained, as you just explained, it maybe doesn't have the ability to reproduce. Maybe it doesn't have those organs that, you're talking about that are reproductive organs. I have answered the question. You stood up here and said trans women are women. Yes. Tell me what you mean. What is a woman? Womanhood is something that, just as Ethan explained, I cannot define because I am not but you myself. you used the well, word. Well, so what did you mean when you said trans women are women if you don't know what it means? Right? So here's the thing. So I do not define what a woman is because I do not identify as a woman. Womanhood is something that is an umbrella term. It includes people that who- That describes what? People who identify as a woman. I identify as what? As a woman. What is that? Was to each their own. Okay. Each woman, each man, each person is going to have a different relation with their own gender identity and define it differently. So trans women that. are women too. Okay. And you want to you, hold you on. Just on. Again. Trans you want to reduce. You, you, listen, won't listen. Even tell me you what the means, though. So you want to reduce problem. women. You want to reduce men down to maybe just their genetics, our genitals, no. our chromosomes. Right. That's what you're what saying. You want to do is that's a, what you what you want to do is appropriate women. You want to appropriate womanhood. Okay. And turn it into basically a costume that could be worn. So that's Matt Walsh of the Daily Wire on Dr. Phil. Uh, I uh, hate these people. <laughs> Sarah, you <laughs> recently <laughs> went through a transformation yourself. And yes. you've been very open about it. What yep. goes through your mind when you when you hear this? So I the non-binary people, they irritate me. Um, and I am not a fan of Matt Walsh. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of like with him. He's, I, I disagree with him on a lot of issues, but he's, abs he's actually really, he's correct in this situation. Like absolutely correct. Like the two non-binary people, like you, if, if a word is up to the person who identifies as it to define it, then it means nothing because it can mean anything mm -hmm. to anybody. So basically they are they are erasing what the word woman means. Um, me okay. as a trans, as a trans individual, I you, you do use not, trans individual. Yes. So I do not go off of this mindset that trans women are women. I say trans women are trans women because and there's a, it's an important distinction as a trans woman. I don't have the same lived experience as a biological female. So, and for me to say that I, so what I, and, and, tr and women don't have the same lived experience that I have growing up male and then transition and be female or be a woman. Um, so I don't, I don't see the harm in differentiating between trans women and women. General society sees me as a woman, treats me mm -hmm. as a woman. And respectfully, I, I, you know, people call me by she her pronouns they do all this stuff uh for me and it's great but at the end of the day i don't think that like there's still a differentiation when we're talking and having these online discussions it's one thing to treat somebody somebody in per something somebody a certain way in person and be respectful of them and it's another thing to have these nuanced conversations um online which there is a difference and we need to acknowledge that difference. Um, I mean, I would not, there's no reason to say that I am a woman because I was born male. Like I was born mm -hmm. male in transition to be a woman. So I am a trans woman. It's, it's, it, those, the non-binary people and, and that whole crowd, I just, they irritate me and mm -hmm. they can go away. I, I want, I, I hate, the, I hate, I hate, <laughs> I hate the fact that they use the trans moniker um, to espouse these ideas because 
being transsexual, I've actually have a gender dysphoria diagnosis. Um, and I've taken medical steps to transition. Non-binary should have its own letter if you want to go off of it and not transgender, you go back to transsexual and non-binary can have their own letter in the alphabet world and and just not use like everybody that doesn't identify as their given sex um to, be called to define them. Yeah. yeah. It's not trans because you don't transition to be to anything different. And right. and they can't say that. Uh, they can't give a definition because otherwise if they gave the definition, they would have to admit that most of like their identity is based off of gender stereotypes and they can't be seen as sexist because that's what they've always pushed against. Right. So when, when you heard Matt, Matt Walsh at the end of it state, like they're doing it to play costume or appropriate women, uh, a woman you know, uh, identity and stuff. Do you think there's womanhood. a lot of truth to that womanhood and stuff like that for, for non-binary in, in of itself? Cause I feel like non-binary has been a huge, like it's brand it's new or it might it have, might not have been on the mainstream like it is now because everybody wants to be so accepting in Hollywood and stuff. So they can, you know, yeah. touch you when you're a kid. But now <laughs> like, I feel like I feel like there there's this huge like trying to say that if you don't accept this, you're you're a bigot. And it's like, well, what if I don't accept this? Because I think it's harming the person to live their life this way. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. honestly think that this person maybe needs help to help them find out where exactly they need to identify as because they like you said, they put this umbrella thing. They're never really going to be one way or another or anything. And I just feel like it's going to be more complicated for them when they're when, when they're growing up in adulthood uh, and everything. Yeah. It's, I, it's well, weird... they've they've basically made anything that's gender nonconforming, like tomboy, tom girl, like being more feminine as a boy, like they've made that into its own thing. Like it's right. not something that's always happened and been like, okay, okay, you're just more of a tomboy, or you're just. But that's part of the issue. Is it seems like. That's why there's a big trend, um, and most of the trends been in young uh, is has been with young females to try like call themselves non-binary and get double mastectomies and stuff like that. It's because they're more butch. They would normally be like a butch lesbian or a tomboy, and uh, and so then they identify with this group, and then the detransit. I've been kicked out of two Reddit groups. Like I've been banned from two Reddit groups for saying that detransitioner like trans trenders are real and when the and when the detransition rate skyrockets it's going to hurt actual trans people because and this is what we're seeing right now that that's all happening and now it's just making everybody that's trans look like we're all these crazy nut jobs and now people are like i there's people out there on the more gender critical side that doesn't want any trans representation. Like they even want to cancel people like me. They're trying to deplatform people like me out there. It's really interesting to watch. Yeah. So those two Reddit groups that you've been a part of, are they specifically focused on like these particular discussions? Like as a part of the trans community exclusively or the LGBTQ yeah. community? Like what, what is the, no, they were, they were both, tra they were both trans reddits. Now, if you know, Reddit though, Reddit is a, you think Twitter's a cesspool? Go on any trans or LGBT <laughs> Reddit site. Woo! They are the most Toxic. commun like communist, like very hard. Like I don't understand it. Like how do you think that you're gonna do well in a communist situation if you're if you're LGBT? But they think that they're gonna be the ones in charge. It's so <laughs> weird. It's so weird, especially because of every place that was communist. And they 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 try to come up with so many excuses mm -hmm. on how China is LBGTQ friendly or how, you know, Soviet Union was LBGTQ uh, friendly and all of this type of stuff. And it's like they really they really weren't. It was like probably the worst place you could live. And I think it's just this stuff that they've been grown up to to learn is that the more you pretend you're a victim the more you can be heard and righteous and talk about you know your oppression your imaginary oppression and all this kind of stuff while living in new york or you know los angeles or some shit like that <laughs> like it's just fucking insane to me that they honestly think that their lived experience would be better out of the u.s and in china 
or in the Soviet Union. It's but it's they would so never strange. move there. No, they won't. No, like I would not. give that. I would. I, I think we. I think we could set up a cultural exchange program between the woke left and Cuba, and it would be great. Oh, for sure, <laughs> absolutely. They would. They would have a phenomenal time. <laughs> They'll, they'll, so, get the, the, they'll get to see their hero try. Or we can send them to possible. Iran where their transition will be accepted. Oh, well, there's so, that too. I'm, I'm curious, Sarah, because you talk about this, the, this like pending wave or phenomenon in which people are going to detransition. What would you say of the trans community, just ballpark estimate, is going to go down? path of detransitioning like what percentage of the trans community do you think is going to go down that path uh, the transgender uh community or the non-binary com- well see that's the problem is like the non-binary community most of them don't actually take any steps to transition they simply self-id so there's really no way to tell the stats on detransition for them uh, mm-hmm. People that actually have like the double mastectomies and take hormones or anything like that, I think we're at 1.3 or last in 2017, it was 1.3%. I think you'll see it go up to 10, 20%. Wow. 10, 20%. For people, yeah, the girls that had their had their breasts removed, I think you're going to see their, their regret rate is going to go up a lot. I, I think so too. And there was a really good 60 minute... Um, episode that came out highlighting detransitioners and their mm-hmm. experience on what they're in these places that just want to encourage you to transition. They don't want to encourage, you know, having you to go and talk to somebody, make sure this is right for you. Like some of them were talking about like the whole, the whole experience from when they said they wanted to transition to when they, they, you know, chopped off their breasts or anything like that. It was a span of like <laughs> a week and a half. <laughs> No, but I mean, like that, that's what happens. Yeah, that's oh, exa- and then, well, and then when calling. they try to talk about it, no, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. that's what they're calling rapid onset gender dysphoria, and I don't like that term because um, it's not true dysphoria. So it's it, it that's exactly what it is. It's like within a week, like when you see people on Reddit going or not Reddit, but TikTok being like, "Oh, I just figured this out like a week ago." So I don't know what this all means. Like, then why, then why are you identifying this way? Like, what are you going to take the whole steps to do, um, and, and and do that? But you're absolutely right. Like, pushing for it is it, it, it's become such a trend. Now, my, now I guess we can think about it in this sense. If you really want to see what that rate will look like, it's it's like look at the goth kids when we were in school, when I was in school, <laughs> and 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 how many of them still identify as goth as they get older right, that's w- that's what that's what's been taken over like the goth and emo crowd well it went from goth to emo to seeing kid to now tr- bi- now binary like that's the transition really? that it's gone from that's what like, you that's, think it's it's that's the that's the direction we've headed down is that basically I, I i think that they they it's that's what they remind me of it's like this people in school that want to be different but also conform to their gen like to their group that's what it is. So I think the goth kids are very um, indicative of what we're seeing now because it's, it's, tra- it's, it's, yeah, like I said, it went from goth to, you know, emo to seeing kid. Now I think it is non-binary is becoming that. But the problem with it is, is not only are they being involved in activism, which no, none of those gr- other groups have re- ever really been involved in activism, except for, you know, rising against the state. Right, which they're all for the state now, um, and then um, they've co-opted the LGBT community's message. Which, after 2015, there really was no fighting for the LGBT community because we got everything that we wanted. Right, right. same-sex marriage through Obergefell v. Hodges. Yeah. Um, so before we continue be... on, uh, okay. oh yeah, well, go ahead, Jay. No, no, no go ahead, no, Jay. No, 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 you go. Happy with you. Uh, I was just gonna say we're, we're no, no, approaching no, an hour. No, 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 you go ahead. Jen. No, no, you go. How about you go? Please. <laughs> we're posting an hour. So we're going to, for for the Habibis who want to keep watching, go ahead and sub to us on uh, Habibi. Whoa, whoa, shit. What is it? Patreon.com forward slash. Yeah, Patreon.com forward slash Habibi Bros. We're going to continue the discussion behind there. Uh, we're going to, we're going to keep this going. 
Uh, but if you want to watch Habibi, bro, uh, God damn it, Jay. It's, it's <laughs> patreon.com <laughs> forward slash Habibi bros. Down, you, you'll see the links down and below. Um, yeah, in the like, description. Just like Down's mom. It's also like, right yeah. here. Right. It's all right down. Here. All Shut down. Fuck up, Spencer. You're fired. Fuck up. You're fired. Spencer, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Spencer, Sarah's already my favorite guest because she fired <laughs> Spencer for us. 